What's going on guys? Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. Today we're going to be talking about bodyguarding, the art of close protection. So I'm jumping on the bandwagon here. I've had a number of people reach out to me and say, Will, what is your opinion on this, this and that, right? I wasn't going to give my opinion on this because frankly, um, I've never worked with the Secret Service. I've never worked in dip uh, diplomatic security service. Okay. I do have a background in close protection. Um, I'll let me lay it out for you real quick what my personal experience has been with bodyguarding before we jump into this, just so you know my limitations of expertise here. I got my start in 2014 when I went to Cirrus Bodyguard Academy in Denmark. It's actually known as the Harvard of Bodyguard Schools, very well respected um, bodyguard course. And I went to their low medium risk, two week long course. That was 2014. I think I was like 26, 27, something like that. Um, and I did that. And I came home from that and I right away got started doing a lot of training courses for bodyguarding. It was my intention originally to maybe go with diplomatic security service or something like that. I ended up going and doing um, La Sorsa bodyguard school in Miami, Florida with Joe La Sorsa, a former, former Secret Service guy. I then went on to do my um, HRCC high risk civilian contractor course with tactical response. I did about five weeks total with them. I did, I think, let's see, I did their CQB course. I did their um, high risk civilian contractor direct action course. I did their uh, small unit tactics course and something else. And then I went back and did another CQB course. So I did about five weeks total with them. Uh, from there, I went over to Israel and I trained for a couple of weeks with, um, I'll just say I went over and trained a couple of weeks with their bodyguards over there. Then I did um, about a month in the UK doing uh, surveillance and counter surveillance training with a company out there. Um, I'm, I'm leaving a couple of things out, but I have another couple of courses that I did. Oh, um, Academy formerly Blackwater. I did their individual protection specialist course, got my certificate with them. I worked for a brief while doing um, uh, surveillance for a private detective, a couple of different private detective companies that also did, um, some of them also did executive protection stuff. And then I worked a couple of small details here and there um, when I could. That is kind of my experience with bodyguarding and close protection. So you'll see I'm I'm absolutely no expert. Like I am a I'm a martial artist, okay? I'm a guy that if you pay me enough money, I'll be your bodyguard. <laughs> like I'm one of those type of guys, right? Um there's a huge difference between that and like diplomatic security service DSS, they work for the Pentagon and the um protect like diplomats overseas and in, in the state and stuff like that. They work for the embassies, this and that, right? The secret service, there's a big, big difference and a large gap between like <laughs> a guy like me who does courses. And then if you pay me money, I'll be your bodyguard. And then like those guys, you would think that there would be a large gap in professionalism as well, which historically has been the case. What happened? What happened to that? Why is it now that, in my opinion, a guy like a guy like me, right? Guys who work as basically independent contractors working for the highest bidder, um, or even guys that work for Blackwater doing stuff like that, what we call them, you know, PMCs, private mili military contractors. Why is it that it seems like those guys have more professionality than who are protecting the president, former president of the United States right now. A lot of people are saying it's diversity, right? It's the diversity mandates. Um, and I really can't, I can't argue with that too much. What we saw happen was <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. And um, the lady in charge of the secret service should resign, in my opinion. Um, ultimately, when it comes to leadership, like when something like this happens, it lays on you. And obviously she wasn't there making the 
making, you know, calling the shots and like all of that. But ultimately it falls back to leadership. And if there's poor leadership, it will trickle down. And that has been my experience, you know, even working with the fire department for eight years um, and doing everything else that I've done, poor leadership absolutely trickles down to the rest of the agency or department or whatever. So she, she should resign. That's that's first of all. Second of all, um, <laughs> everyone's pointing it out. And I just watched the Joe Rogan, one of the Joe Rogan podcasts, and he was talking about this. And um, everyone's talking about the female agent, Secret Service agent, that is on Trump's protection detail. So there's a big difference between uniform Secret Service and like, the people who protect the president they're supposed the people that protect the president the former president like especially the people who protect current president they're supposed to be a lot more trained they're supposed to be just a higher cut of individual that's not what we saw happen um particularly with this one agent and you i think you know who i'm talking about she was the one that she was standing in front of the limo. Um, then basically the limo was just what we call any car that you put the VIP in, the VIP or the president. Like that becomes the limo, right? She's standing in front of the limo and she's got her weapon in like a retention position, right? And then she like doesn't know what to do. She like tries to holster it. She can't. She brings it out. She puts it back. She's looking around like this, all fucking like antsy. And then she finally puts it back, but she's taken out again. And then, and then there is a video of her later on when they get to the ER emergency room and she's back in action and she takes out her gun again and she's looking around and then she like it's back but she takes it out again and she's like looking around she doesn't know what to do she's just standing there in front of limo this is not okay so i'm gonna defend her for a second here before i continue because there is a something that nobody else has talked about yet what happens when you experience a large adrenaline dump like that is you go full retard for a minute. Like, literally, unless you've done something that could quadrillion times already, which she should have been holstering her weapon and stuff under stress a lot already, but fine motor skills, like things like putting your, your weapon away and stuff, kind of, sort of, mm, um, really, they go out the window. And it's just, you're, you're really, you go full retard for a minute. There is a famous um, example of this when you saw Reagan's assassination and all of his Secret Service agents dove on him and everything. There's one guy, we call him the Uzi guy. He pulls out an Uzi and he's like fiddling with it, right? He's like, got it here. He's fi he's like fiddling with it. Um, this guy was highly qualified with that weapon. It's not like he had never used it. Like he had, he had dumped a lot of rounds with that Uzi before. But there is something that happens when the adrenaline dump happens like your fine motor school skills go out the window. And this is talked about in bodyguard training a lot. If you go to a good school where like you will do repetitive actions again, that you'll see people like they'll tap and they'll, they'll do this with their weapon, right? Maybe they're not experiencing a malfunction, but they're just, they're, they're doing things that they've kind of done a lot before. And they it makes sense to their brain somehow to like keep doing it. And they're just going on auto replay and they get fidgety like that. And, that's what adrenaline does to the human body. Now, we have to give it to this, this one female officer, agent, whatever. Um, as bodyguards, probably like 90% of the time, over 90% of the time, it's boring. Nothing happens. Right? I mean, we do we do drills when you're in when you're going through training, you do covering you know, covering evac drills where it's like shots go off and you grab your principal, you turn, you run. Like we do a lot of those drills, but as you advance in your career, like I don't believe you do a lot more of those drills. Like things get rusty and just you're not expecting something like that. So when it actually happens, like it's not like you're a green beret out there getting shot at every week and you're just numb to it and used to it. Like these officers and agents it was a lot for them to process and deal with at the time. Does that give this woman any excuse? No, she made her she made her position look really terrible. And the fact that everybody is talking about this 
and talking about her specifically, it doesn't reflect well on the president of the United States uh, position of office. It doesn't reflect well on the Secret Service. Um, should she be fired? Probably not. I don't think she did anything specifically wrong, except here's here's my take on it. Why was she why why did she keep bringing her weapon out? There was no threat seen around her, right? We're, we're always trained like unless you're going to bring your weapon out and like keep it at the a high port or something like that, um, or maybe keep it down in the sewer position, like. There's no reason why she should have had it in the retention position like this. Like, that just didn't make any sense to me. It didn't jive with me. And, like, nobody around had their sidearm out except this woman. Um, and I don't know why she kept bringing it out. It's just a no-no. Like, you don't, you don't do that, right? Like, there's no threat around, dude. Like, there's no... There's no potential threat around. Keep your weapon holstered. Be a professional. Okay. Nobody else had their weapon out that I saw. So why do you keep bringing your weapon out again and again? It, it's unprofessional. Like once it's in its holster, it stays in its holster until you need it again. Don't bring it out for no reason. That was unprofessional in my personal opinion. I don't know who this woman is. I haven't done any research on it. I'm not going to waste my time, frankly, but... She seemed incredibly unprofessional. Um, and this is what you get with the mandates like that. And then you'll also, you're also going to hear like, well, why are all these women protecting Trump? Like he's a big dude and like you need big dudes protecting him. Yes. In my personal opinion, you should primarily be using these female secret service agents with female principals and protectees. That's who they should be protecting. If you're a woman, you should be protecting a woman. Not to mention the fact that, like, if I'm if I'm a diplomat or if I'm a VIP, look, your bodyguards are going to be with you in some pretty private moments, right? Or at least they're going to be right outside your door. So, like, you really just don't want females around you all the time like that. Like, look, if I want to walk around on my boxers, dude, I don't want females there. Like unless they're like girlfriends or something right like it's just like it's not typically done you typically just don't see that done too much there are some third world countries where like dictators have their own like units of exclusively female bodyguards it's weird i believe they probably bang them i don't know like what the deal is with that kim jong-il did it i think kim jong-un does it as well Qaddafi did it but that was like a weird thing. I don't understand. I'm, I'm assuming they're just sex slaves and bodyguards, but I don't know. But we're not that. <laughs> so like take your female executive uh, uh, executive protection officers, whatever you want to call them, secret service agents, and task them to the first lady. Task them to the wife of, you know, Jay Powell or the wife of whoever, right? Like the daughter of this person. Number one, they're the same or equal size, generally speaking. So they can dive in front of them. They can cover and evac them, right? For those of you guys who don't know, cover and evac is like, you'll literally grab your principal. You'll like grab them by the shoulders and by the arm and turn them around and then use your body to shield their back while you run away. Females can't do that. You're leaving like half of the dude exposed if it's Trump. And I saw there was some big dudes there too. Um, but like the three or four women that were on his detail, it's like, why, man? Why? Like, why do you have them there? Like, unless it's like, oh, we don't know what to do with these people. Give them the Trump. Like, doesn't make any sense. He's out there campaigning. He's like, not even, it's not even, he's like, he's like Clinton or, or like Bush. And even, even then, like. You should have men working with men and females working with females. It's just the nature of it. But this is what happens when you get all you go full retard as a society and you think that like women can protect men and stuff. And look, like as a as a martial artist, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care like how many years of jujitsu and like how much hand to hand combat you're doing. If you're a woman and the guy is like any decently built guy. He's going to beat you. 
Like, yeah, you might be able to put up a fight, but like he could still grab you and throw you and beat you. Like, it's just not the same. It just, it's not the same. Okay. Men and women are built differently. And when it comes to combat and fighting, it's not the same. Um, and I understand that like they have weapons and they're meant to like not engage anyone in hand to hand combat, but it's like, dude, you, you send two women at me who are trying to arrest me. Good luck, man. Like, good luck. Come on. Like, for real. It doesn't make any, it doesn't make any logical sense. And that's what you get when you have these diversity mandates. Like, our country has gone crazy with this stuff. And I'm glad that you're seeing it reflected now. I'm glad that you're seeing it in everyone's face. And everyone seems to be having the right idea here where they're like, wait, what? What? That makes no sense. We've gone too far. And we have. And that's what you get. And this is what you get. And I really don't want to like talk badly about this female officer because for all, I keep saying officer, I believe they call them agents. For all I know, she could, she could be a very good um, agent. You know, you don't get that position generally without merit, although it could, it very well could be the diversity mandates. But I don't know, so I'm not going to assume and I'm not going to talk trash about her. But um, the behavior that was filmed and was demonstrated was unbecoming of an individual in her position. So this is my take on it. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about like the security perimeter and you know the, the roof that they failed to protect. Like I, it, it's all fishy to me. And if you ask me, like, my honest opinion about it, it was a mix of gross negligence, incompetence, and poor leadership. And there could very well be some intentional um, stuff behind it as well. I don't get too much into conspiracy theories, but something doesn't sit right about this at all but that's for another video i hope you enjoyed this one guys if you if you like what you saw give us a thumbs up leave a comment down below i know we've got a lot of close protection officers and people who have worked in the industry that watch this channel comment down below uh, let me know what your thoughts are on this video and on the subject in general i'd love to hear about it until next time please remember that you are your first and last line of defense and i'll see you wednesday for a warrior wednesday video oh don't forget gutterfightingsecrets.com we got hand-to-hand -hand combat training videos up there direct download absolutely absolutely brutal <laughs> lethal shit like watch these videos and you will have a new understanding for what violence and self-protection is all right guys i'll catch you next time stay safe cheers